Hey class, it's Bill with the continuing demo from week four. We are creating our own objects and using them, which is cool stuff. We're doing the Pete's Pizza Pizza class as a demo, and as a reminder, we have our UML class diagram that we're working off of. What we've done so far is we've translated everything from this first section into code. We created enums, we did some constants, which were referred to on the, uh, on the original description page, we created all the private data, and we're, we also worked on the constructors. So we have these first three all taken care of and we're ready to create some other methods. So let's jump back to our code and let's see what we need to do there to uh, continue on creating these methods. Uh, we've created all our constructors as you've seen. Right, so hopefully you thought about those and referred to those. Now I'm gonna, uh, again, since we're writing kind of complex code now, I'm gonna I'm going to create some banner headlines or headers for each of these things and make sure that it's really super clear what section is what so as I scroll down I can see these things really well. Alright, so I have my constructors. Let's work on the next set of uh, common types of methods. Let's create the accessors. Okay, so what are accessors? Well, accessors let us get at the data, right? They let us access the data. So these are going to be our get methods. So let's talk about those. Let's do control M to insert a new method and we're going to start filling these in. So let's say that we're going to create get type, which is the first accessor. Uh, typically the get access the accessors have no parameters here, but they return a thing of the type in question. So of course get type needs to return a pizza type and it needs to return the internal data called type. I don't have to say this.type, I can, it's not a big deal, but that's the only type it's going to know about in this case. And so, and to save room, of course, I'm going to start my, uh, start my open uh, curly brace here. Now, uh, we always, of course, want to be a good citizen and we want to uh, type in this data. Again, it makes very nice Java docs. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to paste in that data. All right, so our accessors look like this. We say we're going to get the pizza type. It returns the type of the pizza. We give it the type. We give it the name of the, of the method. And of course, uh, we return the type. And notice this one is also going to be public because we want the outside world to be able to get at it. You may have uh, methods that you don't want the world to get at that you want to use only internally for yourself. That's perfectly fine. Those would be private. Now, I think you can see that all of the rest of these are going to be exactly like this. So hopefully you are not surprised when I paste these things in. Uh, they are going to be, uh, you know, they're, they're going to make a lot of sense. So here we go. All right, here are the rest of these things. Of course, when I paste, I always get this. So I have the accessor for the size, the accessor for the thin crust. All of these look just the same. All right, so pretty cool. Now, you might say, wow, those are so standard, why doesn't it just generate them for me? Well, some IDEs would, in fact, right? You could press a button and magically it would go create some skeleton accessors for you and even the, uh, the mutators. So you may find programs that actually will go and do that work for you, but they are fairly formulaic at this point, so it's kind of tedious to just go create them, but that's the way it works. All right, now let's do one that we, that we uh, haven't seen. It's not so automatic, and that is we want to get the area of the pizza. So let me get a start to that, right? We're going to want to create a method called get area and we're going to uh, down here you're going to close the, the curly brace. Okay, so we, we know what we want to do. We want it's going to be a double because we're going to be doing some math. So I'm going to create some variables. I'm going to create a, a variable called diameter and a variable called area. And then I need to figure out what the area is because eventually I need to return something. And in fact, later I'm going to return, uh, I'm going to use the math library, I'm going to use the power function. I need to return the diameter divided by 2.0 to keep it a floating point. And I'm going to raise that to the second power and I'm going to multiply that by pi. All right, that's going to give me the area. But I need to figure out what the diameter is, but I have to decode because remember, way up here, I've got my constants that say how big things are and I've got to take the sizes and figure out based on that 
which constant to use. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to need a set of nested ifs to figure that out because I've got to say, well, if the size of the pizza is pizza size dot small, remember to use an enum, you take the name of the enum and then a dot and then the enumerated value you're interested in, right? So if the pizza size is small, then, I, then the diameter is going to be set to small diam, right? And then I close this. And then else if, and size equals, and I can continue on. Now, uh, let me go ahead and fill that out for us quickly. Okay, so I've typed these all in, and let's see if I, oh, of course, I have forgotten semicolons. Uh, so if you type, uh, look at this carefully, you'll see that I have typed in all of my options here. And uh, this, this is kind of ugly. It seems like an awful lot of code just to take a size and decode it into diameter. So this is one of those cases, these rare cases where I look at this and just go, wow, this is ugly, right? This seems, this seems way too long and way too ugly. So this is a, one of those very rare cases where I think I'm going to say I'm going to relax my rule that says you must always use curly braces for ifs because we know if will apply to the next statement. It just happens to be when you use curly braces, that statement is a block of statements. So I think this is one of those, again, rare cases where I'd say, wow, I'm just going to relax my rule and I'm just going to sort of go with something that's a little easier to read like this. So now you see it looks a lot easier to read and I've lined things up so it's actually very easy. If the code is more clear I think it's okay to do this um, and, and the only the thing that I do here that I think makes it more okay, maybe I'm just justifying, is I'm putting the thing on the same line so I'm not tempted to go and hit enter and put another thing and then be confused about whether it's part of the block or not. In this case uh, I, I'm, I think that this is actually the more readable code and I would actually recommend going with something like this just because it is more clear. Again, rare case where we relax our own rule that says you should, uh, you know, you should always use the curly braces. So there you go. So now I have my get area function which decodes size into diameters and it returns the diameter as it's cal or the, the area as it's calculated here. So hopefully that makes sense. Stop and look at it and in fact wind back the video and look at what it looked like before with the nested ifs with all the curly braces and I think you'll agree this is better. So now we have all of our accessors and then we need our mutators, right? We've got a few places where we are allowing the user to do that. And the mutators, I think you can you can see pretty easily based on the constructor that they're going to look something like this. Right? So an example of the first mutator is the following. Right? To set the pizza type, you pass in a type and then just like in the constructor, you set that equal to this, the object reference dot type, which is the internal data. So all of our mutators are going to look exactly like this. So this should not be any kind of surprise to you when I paste in the rest of these things and they look like this. Right? So all of these uh, are provided here. I pasted them in, but they are, again, very formulaic. The standard accessors and the standard mutators are very formulaic. They all look alike. Now, the only other thing that is a very interesting one is up in the accessors, we want to do one other thing and that we haven't done, and that is the two-string method. So we said we wanted to have a method that let us um, take make a string representation of the object in case it gets coerced into a you know into a string format or in case we actually want it so we're going to create a thing called to string and we need to figure out how to make that work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a multi-line description of the string of the, the pizza and i'm going to do it by starting out with an empty description and I'm just going to start by doing this. I'm going to do this in multiple lines because I'm going to build it and if I try to do it all in one line the code's going to be almost unreadable. So I'm going to do sort of a string building exercise here where I'm going to say descript plus equals which is going to concatenate onto the empty string the word type and then I'm going to concatenate on the type and then I'm going to concatenate on a backslash n which is our new line character.
Now this is interesting because what is type? Type is an enumerated value of type pizza type. Well how am I just typing the, that word and how is Java supposed to interpret that? Well again Java is pretty good at coercing things into strings and it turns out that enumerations will automatically let themselves be coerced and they will just return a string value representing that enumeration value. So that actually works. It's kind of amazing but it just works. And then I'm going to continue on down the line. I'm going to say descript plus equals and I'm going to do the size and I'm going to continue on plus uh, size plus backslash n. Okay, now I'm going to next need to do whether it's thin crust. Well this is a boolean so how the heck am I going to do that? Well let's see I could create uh, let's say a, I'm going to create another string that's a temporary string that says well um, this is thin yes or uh, thin uh, stir right I'm going to create a thin string and then I'm going to say if um, I have thin crust right if it's thin crust then I'm going to set uh, the blah, blah blah I'm going to set thin string equal to uh, yes right because I need a human readable word and I don't want just a boolean that returns true or false because that's a little harder to read for, for most folks okay else else uh, open open that thin string equals no and then close this and then I can catenate on thin string right then I can say descript plus equals oops plus equals if I can type uh, thin and then I can concatenate on thin stir right and then plus a new line character now yes you can do this you might come up with something a little bit easier. You might say, well, you know, you showed us a trick earlier. Maybe we can put this on fewer lines. But this is a whole lot of work. It seems like a whole lot of work to take this thing that's a Boolean and turn it into the words yes or no. Now, I'm going to show you a, a very strange, the strangest operators that you will probably ever see in Java or in C. It's the same thing. It is a crazy, crazy thing, but I want to show it to you because you might as well uh, you know, know that it exists and uh, you will scratch your head every time you see it, but it is a useful thing. So take a screenshot of this if you want to see the comparison, but let's go and do it that way instead. Okay, so I have changed this back and just made it more like the other ones. So this is how this is called a ternary operator because it has three. It's an operator that take that has three different pieces. It works on three pieces of data, so it's a ternary operator. And this is like I would call it an inline if. It's where you need to de do this kind of decoding and make a choice and return one of two values, which is so common, and this is the way it works you put a condition in parentheses. So let's come back here and in parentheses I'm going to type the condition is just thin crust, right? It's whether it's thin crust. You don't need to say this equal equal true or something like that, right? The condition is whether we have thin crust. And then what do we do with that? Well, we put a question mark, this is the ternary operator in action, and then we put the thing that we want to return if it's true and then we put a colon and then we put a thing that we return if it's false. Okay, this will, you're gonna have to stop and look at this. This says, look, evaluate this condition, which just happens to be a Boolean, it could be a normal condition. Evaluate that. If it's true, I want you to return yes in, in this spot, and if it's not, I want to return no in this spot. Now, because of precedence in this particular case, I want to also do this or else I'm going to get a weird order of things, but this is going to be the way it's going to work. So this says evaluate this condition, return yes or return no depending on whether it's true or false, and do that all in line without having a separate set of ifs and a variable and all of that silliness that we did before. But it's very hard to read. 
right? So it's uh, some folks will shy away from this. You may work at places that say don't ever do this, but um, you know we're programmers and we need to learn to look at complex things. And when you see it in the future, you'll say, "Wow, it looks weird," but hopefully you'll you'll understand it in general. But this is a great use for the ternary operator. I don't know if your book even covers it. Maybe it does somewhere. There you go. And then last but not least, I can give the special instructions. Right? And then I simply return the description. So I am constructing a little string representing, um, representing the pizza, and there you go. It's my best attempt, and again, your eyeballs have to know that this is going to be new lines, so each one of these things is on a separate line by itself. So we've constructed a string descriptor. Now, one of the things that you're going to see is we've done an awful lot of work here. I think that we've created everything that the class said. Right? We've done the constructors, the accessors, we've done the mutators, we've, done, uh, we've set up the enums, we've set up our constants, we have our private data. We really have a lot of this done. And you know, we, we might be tempted to say, well, it compiles, we think we're done. But the truth is, we're, we're really only just starting because we haven't ever even made an object of this type to see if it works. We haven't seen and tested to see whether everything works as expected here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually do some testing. We could write a main in another program and use this class, but a very common way to do this is to create our own method in here and use it for testing. So right now, if we run this thing, there's nothing to run, right? There's no main. There's, there's really nothing we can do with this. So, you know, we can compile it. We can come over here and we can say, you know, right click, but we can only do new pizza, right? We, we, can, we can run these constructors, but that's really not very exciting. Now, we do have, we do have a tool, some tools that can help, right? We can actually go and do that and create a new pizza and create an object. So we can actually do this. There is an object, sort of an object uh, t tool here that lets us do it, but really we want to do this in our own code anyway. So the next part of the video is going to continue on and say, wow, yes, we've done our class, we think we've done everything right, but we have not written our unit test, so as programmers we're really not finished. So thanks for watching this video, but please do continue to the next one so we can talk about um, how we can create our own unit tests and make sure that as a supplier of this code we are really buttoned up and we believe that we are producing a quality piece of code for other people to consume.